uh, this is a 79 year old gentleman uh, who presented uh, to me as a referral from the physician and uh, medical gastroenterologist for complaints of uh, loss of appetite and uh, um, and feeling generally weak. His hemoglobin was found to be 9. He's a known hypertensive, he's a known diabetic, he's on medical treatment for them both. Um, no known cardiac illnesses. His recent echo was fine and I think his ejection fraction was about 65%. Um, he's, a, he's a bit of a thin guy, uh, BMI of 22. Recently, he was admitted in the hospital with, uh, with urosepsis and uh, he went into AKI. I mean, this is about two months ago. He was under the physicians. He went into AKI and lots of electrolyte uh, imbalances, went through several days of not eating or drinking properly, and I guess that's probably why his serum albumin had dropped down to 2.8. The medical gastroenterologist had already done the colonoscopy, and there was a large growth at the ascending colon slash hepatic flexure, biopsy of which came back as high-grade villous dysplasia with a focus of intramucosal adenocarcinoma. CT said that this, this was a mass in the hepatic flexure, no no evidence of any uh, metastasis anywhere in the abdomen, liver was fine, uh, but there were some uh, peri, uh, pericolonic uh, lymph nodes. Chest x-ray was fine, CA-99 was 15, and CEA was 5. Uh, just one other uh, important history of note. He has a, uh, we'll show you when we scrub up, he has an upper midline incision from an operation that he had about 13 years ago. We don't have the details of it. He seems to think that it is some kind of a stomach operation. I can only assume that it was a it was an ulcer operation. So we won't know what it is until we go in. So that's uh, that's essentially the history, sir. Uh, what is the role of uh, PET scan in assisting these patients? CA is slightly raised, 5.1. I mean, yes, I, I, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, when you're ready, you go out with the surgery. I'm just taking time here. Okay, okay, fine. No, well, I've got another minute. We're capitalizing at the moment, so I've still got some time. Um, I, I don't routinely ask for a PET CT for colonic tumors because it is not in the guideline. However, I would go for a PET CT if the CEA is exceptionally high. And the reason for that is um, you, you, the, the, PET, the PET CT is, is, uh, is, not a, is not as great an investigation as a, as a um, multi-slice contrast enhanced CT when it comes to the T stage and the N stage. But PET-CT is great to detect small occult metastasis which might have been missed in any of the previous investigations. And uh, there's no point in routinely doing it, looking for lesions in, in other parts of the body. However, if the CEA is markedly high, and if the tumor happens to be a small tumor with some lymph nodes here and there with no metastasis, I would be very worried. I would want a PET-CT just to make sure that I'm not missing a large lung mat or a brain mat or a something something that a CT hasn't picked up. What is normal CA on up behalf of the delegates? Up in our hospital, it's up to five, sir. Right. Yamil, yeah. can you hear me? Dr. Ishwar Murthy here. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to have you here and it's very, very thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, Central and you uh, from all along. You've been very helpful for all academic deliberations under the... And Thank you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. Of and today, at the helm of this today's academic year, we are having day two, and the whole C is going to be waiting to see you non-stop, one procedure from beginning to the end, so that they can follow it, interact with you, they can feel your pulse every time, the decision making, and any challenges, how you pursue further. So you can take it through, and we have eminent faculties. On my right is John Tanakumar, on my left is Madheswaran, and I'm going to leave them with able hands. And I'll also come and say hello to you, and good luck. Best wishes. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, it's a pleasure and honor that uh, uh, we have been given this opportunity to do this live demonstration from Apollo Hospital Greens Road in Chennai. I thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, we, 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 we've got everything set up here, and we're all ready to go. And hopefully, as, uh, exactly as you said, the candidates will have a good session. Uh, and I can only hope and pray that everything goes on well today. Thank you, thank you. So I invite John in this moment to just to start the initiating and ask some questions to delegates. Make it as a two-way traffic. If it is agreeable to you, we will interact here Absolutely. also internally also. Absolutely okay, fine, John. sir. Absolutely fine. I've done the case presentation. Patient is being anesthetized at the moment, so we've got at least another 15 or 20 minutes for you to do your academic uh, discussion. 
and uh, and while you carry on with your academic celebrations i'll i'll get my team ready and start getting stuff done any other last bit of the fourth question uh, yeah we we'll, we'll show you uh, majesty just, oh, just yeah, yeah. once we are in we'll, we'll show you next one He's doing a very classical way of uh, entering the abdomen, probably subambulatal. He will create, he gets the tract well and make an incision, and he will probably put the blood broker through. This is super okay, super ambulatory. Okay, super ambulatory. Yeah, he's going left angle like that. He's probably putting a seam. Who's on it? Blunt. He's lifted the abdominal wall, so this is an easy, nice way of doing things. Very confident. But this cannot be practiced in movies and videos. We have to be very careful about this. Yes, yes, on. Yeah. Yes, on. Yeah, it depends on the experience. Then I do similar things also. You do what your team has been doing, and which we like. <laughs> On an inside view, please, also. So, these are the reasons from the previous uh, stomach surgery. So, you have the same. So, no recurrence of hernia? No, no hernia. These are right side. So, the place where I normally put my right operating port is not accessible because of the condition, so I'm going to do it in a slightly unconventional way. You might get some nice from us. There is a scar here already from a left inguinal hernia repair, open repair. Yes. So yes. I'm just going in the same scar. Where exactly is it? Is it midline, mid clavicular line, mid inguinal point? Uh, it's, okay. it's in the left, uh, le le left, left lower quadrant. Left lower quadrant, yeah. so away from the midline. Away from the midline. Normally, I, yeah. So, normally I would go for yeah. a for a five, yeah. but today I'm going for a ten here because of yes. the fact that uh, we have to. Increase the gas because it just slaps on. Yeah. So, alter our game plan. We need to alter our game plan a bit because of these additions. So, right. So that's. Yeah. Uh, if we, uh, you can keep it a bit higher. Uh, I'll ask him, uh, but you can keep it a bit higher, like 14, for the initial part. What's the IAP somebody wants to know? 15, sir. 15. Change over to 30, I think. 30. <coughs> 30. Yeah, 30. Before we start the, the right hemicolectomy part, I'm just going to do the visualization. So, can you get the monitor this way? I'm going to stand between the legs a bit. So, he's looking from below, in the, from the lower camera. It's come from the left side again. You put it higher up. He's doing an arm. Dr. Jamil, Dr. Ganesh, Ganesh, Shana and uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar oh, are joining yes. for one day. Hello, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, Dr. Ganesh, Dr. Ajay Kumar. Good morning, good morning, Dr. Ganesh. Uh, just, I mean, instead of uh, just, uh, I thought that we'll carry on with discussion when you do, I'll just say this. Please go ahead, go ahead. Uh, which, which approach you follow normally? Uh, we say that for very clinical academy, there is mediocre doctor, right hand approach, intuitive, to the 
middle approach and then a lack of the middle approach. Correct. Uh, I mean, it's not much of the uh, uh, difference uh, compared to uncle middle clearance wise compared to all these three. So, which approach uh, you follow now? I mean, the camera. For uh, um, uh, uh, my agency. I usually follow a lateral to medial approach, but I'm aware that there are people who say medial to lateral approach gets more lymph nodal harvest and better from the oncological perspective and so on and so forth. It depends on the patient. See, this man is 79. Uh, so, yes, it's great to do a complete mesocolic excision with central you know, vascular ligation and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, the, the in a case like this, safety is more important than uh, radicality. We know he hasn't got any lymph nodes uh, on the CT at the SMB area, SMA area, you know, aliopolic origin and so on. So, we'll see how it goes. My plan is to do a medial to lateral. Uh, okay. uh, but at the same time, I'm conscious of the fact that uh, we got to, you know, be safe in whatever we do with this guy. Uh, I mean, I think uh, you, you any, any comorbid conditions? Yeah, 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 quite a few. Well, he's a diabetic. He's from, from this side. He's a diabetic. He's a hypertensive. Uh, he recently got about two months ago. He was admitted in the hospital with urosepsis. Had an ATI, which has reasonably recovered. Um, two previous inguinal hernia repairs, and this operation from 25 years ago, which we believe is a is an ulcer operation. We don't have the details. Hold it, I mean, ideally, you would want to do an agistiolysis with, uh, with a bit of counter traction, but uh, because I have put my force, uh, bearing in mind that it's going to be a right hypothetically later on, I have not uh, positioned in such a way that it's going to be easy for agistiolysis. So I would rather do a different. I would do a I would rather do an agistiolysis with a bit of difficult ergonomics, and then have a better ergonomics for the main operation than uh, than the other way around. So that's why you see me doing agistiolysis here without giving counter track. So, Dr. Jamil, Dr. Ajay here. Hello, Ajay. Yeah, uh, you have decided on the fourth position, or you are going to change because of the addition and all. I've already what is the classical pro fourth I've position? I did just explain. I've already changed it. Normally, I wouldn't be doing like this. Okay. Uh, today, I've, I've put a 10 millimeter port in the left lower quadrant. Uh, I've used the five in the left upper quadrant, uh, and the five in the right upper quadrant. I, I may be. Requiring another, another one or two. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Come here. Doctor Jami. Yeah, hi, Madhu. Doctor Ramesh Chandrawala joined us now. Oh yes. Good, good, Hi, morning. Good, good morning, sir. Welcome, welcome. Good. How are you? Very good. So we are all you working here now. You are fireman now. That was full back, okay?
could just pick up the doctor, please? Now that uh, pylorus is, uh, is hoisted up to the abdominal wall. I'm just going to leave that as it is because I have a feeling that might give me a natural retraction. So I'm not going to take that down. Dr. Jamil, yeah, what is your like take that. on uh, additional ISIS energy source or uh, cold scissors? No, I, 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 I always prefer uh, 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 a good, good, good sharp scissors. Yeah. Uh, but today, because it was a right hemicolectomy, we've already got a harmonic open. So, and okay. so we, but I, I don't open a harmonic just for, for, for that reason, for additional ISIS. A good scissors should do the job. Now, I, I was just saying earlier, this. Uh, uh, I'm from here, is pulled up there. I'm going to leave that, leave that there intentionally, and uh, we'll come back to that area later. Now let's see what the lower abdomen is like. Okay. Uh, um, I'm going to do a lateral to medial in this case. Sir, you go through the white line, sir? Yes. Okay, for the sake of beginners, the point of uh, starting of uh, this section. You're standing on the left side of the patient. That's right. I'm standing on the left. Yeah. The monitor is on the. Uh, the okay. Right now, 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 let me show you the port. Can you just show the port uh, for, for the sake of the audience? So, uh, this is our first port. Okay. Uh, and then we have to put one 10 mm port in the left uh, iliac poster because of all those adhesions. Normally, I don't do that. And then we've got one port here, and one port in the left upper quadrant, and one port in the right upper quadrant. The post. And the table up a bit, please. I think we can see the urethra. Yes. Hmm. Absolutely. The idea is to get into that embryonic plane yes, yes. between the intercolon and the gerotus. And once you get into that embryonic plane, a lot of blunt dissection is still. Yeah, uh, that's our community field. They are help you achieve a plane. plane. Correct, correct. So that is the embryonic plane. So if I can just point out, that belongs to the colon, 
that belongs to the retroperitoneum. So we want to gently move it there. So we don't have to always use an energy to run this course. Just gently push it. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Jamil, just for discussion, uh, what I always try for us, uh, medial to lateral dissection is like a TLP in hernia. Right. Lateral to medial dissection is like a tap in hernia. You are doing everything under vision. Okay, all right. Medial to lateral is like a TLP because all depends on the embryonic fusion planes between the beta colon and the retroperitoneum. Okay. And lateral to medial, you are working towards the camera, whereas in medial to lateral, you are working away from the camera. Okay, that's a good analogy. Right shoulder up, please. Uh, but I agree with your thing. I mean, there is no much uh, difference in oncological clearance whether you follow medial to lateral approach no, no. or lateral to medial approach or inferior to superior approach. I agree. Yeah. The ureter there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So that's the plane that we're talking about. So we just gently work our way. Doing this, you got to be a bit careful as you are coming superiorly because you should not get too carried away in that plane um, because the duodenum will suddenly appear in your head. So, with blunt dissection, just uh, paying a bit more attention to what you see underneath that blunt dissection as you are progressing cranially. One of the things uh, that can happen at this level, particularly on the, well, it, it doesn't happen inferiorly, but it can happen laterally. It, it's easy to get carried away uh, if you're not in the right plane, and before you know it, you will be dissecting behind the kidney. So that's something that you've got to uh, avoid. So, so we have to identify the plane between the rotor fascia and the and the transverse colon. But yeah. some, sometimes you go, you know, this patient is not too bad, he, but uh, when, you, when you have obese patients, sometimes it's uh, a bit easy uh, to get that plane wrong, and then uh, you, you end up uh, going behind the kidney, behind the right kidney. Okay. So that is something that one needs to be careful. So, What you can also do is be a bit flexible. It doesn't always have to be lateral to medial or medial to lateral. A bit of lateral to medial dissection, and then yeah. if you feel if you feel that you are um, you've got a reasonably good window to do a medial to lateral, you, yeah. can, you can put the aleocolic at this point. What is? I'm putting another port because I want. Sir, regarding aleocolic, so my vision is going uh, to retract the cecum yeah. with this port. Give me a give me a uh, ball graph, please. Sorry, uh, Ajay, I heard you say something. Yeah, yeah. Before uh, starting, uh, start reflecting the lateral. Yes. Uh, if you uh, pull the ileum, uh, the uh, ileum, you get the ileocolic being charged. You, now you pull it. Ileum means it may be, it'll be all loose. No, uh, we are actually pulling the cecum, uh, Doctor. Yeah, right? so laterally. Uh, the, yes, you are you are absolutely right. The the, the the mark, the one to look for is that ridge, the ileocolic ridge. Um, you can do it in whichever way you want. I mean, you can pull the pull the appendix, you can pull the cecum. It all depends on the lie of the right colon. In this case, I think I'll have to hold it a bit further up there and give it to my assistant. Hold that, uh, Gaurav, please. Yeah. So I'm going to reposition my assistant. He was holding the cecum earlier. Now I'm going to get him to hold the iliocolic pedicle, which is yeah. this part right. here. And lift it up, yes. And he's going to lift it up like that. Yeah, right. But he has to be very gentle because, yeah. yeah.
So that is the DOD, no? Uh, so go in Gauru, please. The duodenum is made to fall back, uh, Dr. Ajay. Hello? The duodenum is being strapped up, it isn't is, it? Yeah, correct. It is being made to fall back yeah. uh, by releasing all these little strands. This is uh, D2, D3, isn't it? When you cross it, D2, it's D2, D2. Pro pro proper D2. It's D2. Oh. D3 is not in our view. So okay. Proper D2. Have a gold finger, please. Gold finger open for me. Thank you. 
So, um, Dr. Sandil, I, I I have this instrument called Bold Finger. It's called Bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very so the, I sometimes I use this to hook up pedicles. It's not intended to. Uh, it's not. I mean, originally it was uh, manufactured for uh, the purpose of getting a gastric band. Correct. Get a gastric yeah. band around the stomach. But I find it. Uh, I find that there are more than one use for this instrument. So uh, I, I use it quite regularly for hooking up the um, IMA or iliopolis pedicle or whatever. So now um, we now that we have got the window, a nice window at the back, I'm going to just put this gold finger in and come out through that window, which is this, and get my assistant to, all along my assistant was holding the cecum, but now he is going to hold it like that. Hold it there. Yeah, so just, just when I take these tissues right. down, yeah, I can take all these strands down and leave it with just the aleopolis pedicle, which is what I'm going to do now. So, so again, that's part of the embryonic plane. So, the embryonic plane. So, most of the time, if you're in the right uh, embryonic plane, the pneumoperitoneum itself does a lot of uh, help, a lot of favors for you. So, so my assistant is lifting up the pedicle. He's giving gentle traction. And that gives me an opportunity to go all around this pedicle. Bearing in mind that the gerotas is just over there. So this is still part of the um, colonic transfer, we used to call it. So let's see what, uh, what we have here. So that's the pedicle. So we saw the common iliac artery just a little while ago. So that that was there. There it is. That's the common iliac artery. So the aorta is somewhere here. So we will go somewhere there. So, okay. so we have two options here. We can just uh, get a stapler and staple the whole thing together. Or we can do vessel and vein and uh, artery separately. We'll see how it goes. As much as possible, if uh, we do this, we can sweep the tissues up. Able to see the video call it, uh, Ajay? Yes, yes. Yeah. You are trying to sell it nice, isn't it? Trying to, yeah, trying to. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if the situation is really obese and if you're having difficulty getting getting this pedicle as thinned out as we have today, there's absolutely no harm in, in firing a stapler at this point. Okay. Uh,
Jamil Ajay Kripalani sir is here. Oh, good, good, good morning, sir, Dr. Ajay, sir. Hi, Jamil. Enjoying your beautiful work. Oh, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to have you in the audience. It's a pleasure to watch you. That is the issue sometimes because the ways and Ajay are sometimes so adherent to each other, yes, so close yes, to each other, are. that it becomes different or isolated. But we can see how beautifully Dr. Jameel is taking the aerial tissue around the pedicle slowly, step by step, to expose the artery in the vein. That seems to be the final, uh, I think, uh, uh, separation between the artery and the vein. Yes, of course, indeed, sir. Almost there. Beautifully done. Beautifully done, Dr. Jamie. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Keep on up. So we can see how long uh, uh, major rectum Dr. Jameel has taken from the right side. How long uh, major rectum, and that is the difference between uh, D3 at, uh, with the complete major rectal excision and the standard right hemipalectomy. That uh, you take a very wide uh, 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 major colon, so you are removing all the lymph nodes and the area tissue in between that area. That's a medium uh, regime clip, Dr. Jameel. Uh, uh, green. Purple, sir. Purple. 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 So green. Purple is medium large. Yeah. <coughs> purple is medium large. So just for the benefit of the audience, if you if you think you can get the artery and vein separately, go for it. But you don't always have to do it that way. Because yes. as I told you earlier, um, you know, these patients, this maneuver might be quite difficult and possibly even dangerous. And then if the artery retracts back, you're in for some trouble. So if you have a difficulty, you might as well take a, a stapler, a, a white stapler, and, and staple right at the root. It's uh, wonderful. But, but never clip them together. If you don't know, no, I agree. Together, it has to be a stapler, not a clip. 100%. But these are very big vessels, and the artery in the vein should be dealt with separately if you are clipping. Correct. Right. Stapler separates them out. Correct. Oh. And uh, the other uh, small tip for the uh, juniors in the audience, when you have used a plastic material like this to ligate a vessel, do not use energy device to cut. Always use a scissors to cut. You can see the lumen of the ileopolic trunk, you know, such a large vessel. So Dr. Jameel has taken the artery first, which is pulsating now over the clips. And now he'll take the vein because by the time you take the artery, clip the artery and divide it, the vein shrinks in size. One more. So it's uh, two proximal, one distal for both. Yeah. So that's a very robust vessel, you know, and uh, <laughs> once that is dealt with, then perhaps the right colic is, is not there in many patients. Correct. More patients don't have a right colic than have it. So, <laughs> so just for the benefit of the audience, so that's the cecum, and that's the terminal ileum, and this is your, your, your uh, ileocolic pedicle, it's quite long, that's how it needs to be. You've got to, gap, you've got to give 
as as much length as possible and try and take the alleyway show the alleyway police try and take the alleyway police as close to the aorta as possible in order to achieve adequate amount of ontological clearance so so we have already done the um the dissection over here the 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 cecum has been mobilized the ascending colon has been mobilized a bit we still got that to do which i'm going to do now and once i've completed it all the way up to the hepatic flexure i'm going to change the entire operation setup uh, you know to to do the, the the proximal transfers and the mid transfers so let's let's do that now and my intention is also to take the middle colic at its origin if it was a cecal tumor or an ascending colon tumor i will not go to the middle colic at its origin i'll just take the right branch of the middle colic but in hepatic flexure tumor uh, the the standard practice is to take the middle colic at its origin and give at least a 10 cm of uh, uh, colonic margin beyond the tumor wonderful dr jamil yes hi madhesh uh, will you expose superior mesenteric artery and vein in all cases or uh, superior mesenteric vein is uh, the superior mesenteric vein exposure is part of uh, central venous uh, central vascular ligation superior so some of our audience want to listen and they want yeah 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 to... well if if we have to do a central vascular ligation uh, we'll have to go <coughs> to the smv i mean to, to the to the basically we need to follow the embryonic planes and we need to go in the fat planes between the smv and the sma go all the way up get okay. the colic branch of the gastrocolic trunk of henle and and uh, bring the uh, transverse colon down which gives you access to the uncinate process take all the fat underneath the uncinate process okay uh, and then complete your resection but okay. the aliocolic uh, artery ligation is exactly uh, at the point where we have just done so we are, we are okay for as far as the uh, vascular ligation is concerned but in terms of getting out all that uh, uh, fat near the uncinate and smv sma I, i'm not too sure if that's going to be of any benefit to this guy hi jamil uh, anil hedori your wonderful job you're doing hello anil so i agree with you i mean it's uh, cvl is still there are the evidence is not absolutely not very clear cut right. as right. far as uh, cvl is concerned but one thing is sure the at least i mean the basic minimum is what you have done i think that needs to be done yes if you go a little higher than that then you leave a lot of fibrofatty tissue yes and the exposure of the uncinate is not so clear and uh, no. that's the key to a good right hemi and if you see the pattern of recurrence is usually at the in the colonic bed at the at the head of the pancreas right that's where the nodal recurrence is come So this is the bit I was talking about earlier. The idea is to go between the transverse mesa colon and the gerota space, and you shouldn't get too carried over, carried away at this point, uh, because you can go behind the kidney. So you got to be a bit careful there. So I, I think I've uh, uh, just a bit more to go. Let's do this, this uh, couple of inches or so, and then we'll turn our attention to the transverse colon and gastrocolic momentum and so on. Again, you got to be careful. The duodenum will appear. We have already seen it once through the aliocolic window, so we will be seeing it again when we are doing the hepatic flexure. So, one needs to be um, conscious of that all the time. And uh, and uh, I am mentally prepared to um, see the duodenum in a slightly atypical position here because this chap has had a previous ulcer surgery. So, I've seen it. from the inferior window how it's going to appear at this level i don't know uh, let us keep going do you always uh, come to the duodenum from the lateral side or do you prefer no anil uh, i've i've had to do a lot of variation for this guy right 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 uh, even my fourth position i have to be slightly tailored to his uh, to to the to this pattern of adhesion so uh, I mean, I, I was just telling uh, uh, the audience earlier. The first 20 minutes we spent only giving adhesiveitis. I'm sure. Yeah. Then this guy 
some kind of an ultra operation. So I'll show you in a minute. I mean, the, the pylorus is uh, hooked up. I mean, it's, it's attached to the left lobe of the liver, which I haven't taken down. Right, so I think that's enough for now. So that, let, let's go, Gaurav. Let's go. So just to recap, so that, that, that's the cecum and terminal allium. And the aleocolic pedicle is happy with that, Anil? This, this aleocolic pedicle? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a good. Uh, Six centimeters is what. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I see that the visa colon is also beautifully shiny. Right. And uh, yeah. so that's what would you want in a, in a CME? Absolutely. That's so your are, you able to, are you able to appreciate this? So this is the aleocolic pedicle. And that's the CM, sorry, the, the, the embryonic plane. And what you see there is the duodenum. I look down, my daughter, look down. So those are the clips which are almost at the level of the uh, iota. SM, SM, SMB, SMB, SMB. Correct, correct. So that's that. I mean, we could do a bit more of uh, uh, dissection here and pass that duodenum further down, but I, you know, we, we'll do that. We'll do that later. Let's uh, let's concentrate on the difficult bit now. In fact, let me, let me just put it out. So we'll but this is different. This is previous surgery, previous I'm sure this is a very difficult. So I also joined me. I, I did not see the idea of this, but I can understand his life. He's doing an excellent job. He's doing a wonderful job. And both yesterday and today were really great master classes to see how to handle difficult situations, how to adapt to difficult situations. So what I'm holding there is the second part of the duodenum, and I'm doing this just to create some more space for me to make my hepatic cluster dissection easier. So we generally don't divide the lateral uh, colonic attachment at this stage, yes, because that makes the colon a little more wobbly, wobbly. and for tend to fall. It tends to fall to the operative field, so we prefer that the colon stays in its normal position, normal position. and we dissect the mesocolic dissection and the anterior process dissection first because that gives you more space. space. Colon is remaining attached to the uh, to the hepatic flexure, to the liver, and uh, laterally to the left pelvic, left abdominal wall. This colon is a large structure and it wobbles and falls to the field. It makes life a little difficult. Dr. Jamil? Yes, sir. Uh, do we need this much of duodenal mobilization in other cases? Or, uh, okay. Is there uh, any? Okay. Um, there is a view uh, that a central vascular ligation is better done with cockerization of the duodenum. Um, but I am not doing it today for that reason. I don't intend to go to the SMA, SMV um, area near the unfinished. But I am doing this because. I am anticipating difficulty at the top end with all the previous surgery and adhesion. So I want to make life as easy as I can okay. over here so that when I flip it across, okay. hopefully things will work out well. Your mind is well appreciated. Yeah, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, you, you're right. I mean, you don't need to do all this. A standard uh, right hand knee, you don't have to go, you know, that, that much. As long as you see the duodenum safely and as long as you, you pat it down and let it go, let it sink into the retroperitoneum as much as possible, you're, you're fine. You don't need to do any more than that. So what okay. I will do here, while I'm here, because I'm going to change the settings in a little while. So while okay. I'm here, I might as well take this. You know, right colic is absent in most of the patients. And even if it was, it's, it's unlikely to be a substantial vessel. As uh, Dr. Triplani sir uh, uh, commented a little while ago, that iliocolic was quite a robust vessel. So I would be very surprised if I see another vessel here which uh, deserves any clipping or anything more than just what I'm doing here. Actually, the classical right colleague is present only in 30 to 40% of patients. 
And even in them, quite often the right colleague sometimes arises from the ideal colleague. So if you have taken the ideal colleague at the root, the right colleague is already taken care of. Yes, sir. The loop of NLA also will be uh, roughly around in 28%. The only constant vessel apparently is the middle colic, when in 99% of patients will arise from the SMA. SMA. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Sometimes yeah. it gives a separate brand. The right uh, middle colic and the left middle colic arise separately from the SMA. So, uh, to have a good in one percent it can even arise from the IMA. That yeah. is a problem. Yeah. And then you also have the meandering artery. So, yeah. there are a lot of variations of the right colon. So, we need to have a very good uh, preoperative CT scan uh, reading. Uh, which will really help in intraoperative decision making. Correct. Jami, we have uh, Dr. Zamir Pasha here. Oh, great. Sir, morning. Dr. Zamir, sir, good morning. Morning, Jamil. Seeing wonderful work being done. And of course, uh, this is pleading for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Anil, that, that's the second part of the duodenum, which we have patted down nicely, and we have gone as much as possible um, with the hepatic, I mean, with the um, right colon. And I mean, normally you you get to this from superiorly, but today we've managed. To, we, we we wanted to do it like this because superiorly, with all those additions from previous surgery. Uh, things can be a bit challenging, so we have done whatever we can uh, to the highest extent possible uh, inferiorly. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. You can see the head pancreas also now visible there. You can there. see the head of the pancreas. And the, head, the head of pancreas with the fascia preserved. I think one tip I think is the, like uh, uh, Dr. Jamil has done wonderfully. The fascia over the pancreas has to be intact because otherwise you get troublesome bleeding from absolutely, there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, the, the, so this, this is the area that Dr. Anil is talking about. This needs to be left intact. That's the duodenum. That's the unfinished process hiding somewhere here. And we've got the ileocolic pedicle over here, second part of the duodenum. And these are the, the two different embryonic planes. If you look at them, that's the embryonic plane that belongs to the uh, colon. And that's the embryonic plane that belongs to the retroperitoneum, which we are supposed to uh, nicely um, differentiate during a complete intracolic excision. And then, of course, not to forget the most important part of any ontological surgery, getting the ileo well, getting the uh, high tide. And just relax, Gaurav. So, that is the high tide. Let, let's just, so, the high tide for right colonic uh, cancers is the ileocolic, which we have got as high as possible. The cecum is up there. Show me the cecum. So, the cecum is up there, and the ileum is there. So, they've got all this uh, sorted out. So, if you are happy with this part, we will now go to the hepatic flexure, uh, Anil. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Transfer Please. colon and hepatic flexure, yeah. So, so, do you change the position of the Yeah, patient? yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Can you show us that? Yeah, yeah. Of, well, right now, the uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you are seeing the patient. Are you, are you seeing it? Uh, yeah, we are seeing it in insect. Uh, no, can, can, can somebody... Put, uh, pay, uh, can, uh, the, can the cameraman take the insect picture to the top because it is right at the bottom, so I don't think the people in the audience behind can okay. see that. So, yes, 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 perfect. That's now the problem. Can you see? You okay now, Anil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we can see the external picture, but I have lost the last one, but fine, you can explain sure. us the words. So, uh, all along, we've been doing this operation with five ports, one supraumbilical, one left upper quadrant, five mm one right upper quadrant 12, one left iliac fossa 5, and one left lower quadrant 10. So we, we did the entire operation with a steep head down and a bit of right lateral tilt. So in that position, we did the entire uh, right colon. Um, aleocolic uh, mesentery was taken down. Uh, I mean, all the additions in the aleocolic was taken down. And then we went all the way down to the aleocolic, as you saw, and we've taken those vessels. And we, we utilized the same position to go in the embryonic plane towards the second part of the duodenum and, and we have gone up to the uh, unfinished process of the pancreas. And we utilize that opportunity to lift the hepatic flexure a bit from underneath as well. So that's what we have done so far. Uh, and we're now going to the transverse colon mobilization and the uh, and basically going to approach the tumor from, from, from this side, from the distal side. So for, uh, uh, for the 
for the people in the audience who have just uh, uh, arrived. These are additions from an ulcer surgery that this gentleman had about 30 years ago. So we are not seeing the, uh, the last picture. Okay. So still, uh, can you now show the inside view, please? So, so, so there were uh, lots of additions. Are you able to see the inside view now? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Now we are able. So, to. when I started, there were wow. there were additions from there all the, this this show, that area, all the way up to the umbilicus. So, it's a it's a it's a big upper midline incision. So, we I managed to take those additions down, but I intentionally left this uh, antrum stuck to the left lobe of the liver. Because I was hoping that uh, that will give me a natural retraction when I do the gastrocolic uh, uh, dissection. Let's wait and see. Huh? This is the hepatic cluster stuck to the gallbladder which we are trying to release. Wonderful, wonderful. That requires really a lot of patience. You're doing an excellent job, Janet. Thank you. And keeping the oozing to the minimum is something that is, I think, a great tip that all of us must learn because oozing here really destroys all the planes. The audience must, uh, I think we should all appreciate the way he is doing the three point retraction. So, perfect. Uh, <laughs> the way the three point retraction is being done, that's a wonderful demonstration. Look at the way the left hand of uh, Dr. Jamil is working. I think that left hand is the key to difficult surgeries and the way he is uh, keeping it very steady, that is making the magic work. Wonderful, Jamil. Anil, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, all of you in the moderation. <laughs> uh, uh, very senior people like Jamil sir, Kriplani sir. I'm actually honored to, to have you in the audience, all of you in the audience. Earlier we had John Sarakumar sir as well. So, 
Uh, Anil, yes, do you remember there again? Yeah, 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 yeah. So very close. Very, very close. Very close. Normally, you don't see the duodenum at that level. <laughs> I think the previous surgery has just pulled it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it must be a pyroplasty, as Dr. Yeah. Kuklani said. Uh, to be honest, I no, think it's a common test. procedure. If you remember, when we were students and residents, yeah, yeah, yeah. this was a very common procedure. I mean, 10 seconds ago, I, I, I was expecting the duodenum to be somewhere here. But it got pulled up there because of all these additions to the callus. So that's okay. Now that dissection that we did from below uh, has helped because can you see that window there? I mean, can you see yes, that? yes, yes. Uh, that uh, that loose areola tissue that I see here is is, is just nothing but the, the the small film which is separating the supracolic from the intracolic uh, compartment. So we'll break into that in a minute. We'll just uh, get this uh, get this. Yeah. So right. So now we now we have some dots to join. So it's this dot here to that dot there. That's the that's the line we need to go. So for the for the uh, for the uh, purpose of uh, the benefit of the audience. So that's the upper end of the um, uh, the dissection which uh, which we started off from inferiorly. That is the lower end of the or the lateral end of the dissection that we started off from medially. And joining these two completes the right colonic dissection. And <laughs> when you're doing that, one needs to be careful about the duodenum, and that's the duodenum. We saw this duodenum earlier as well from below. Now we're seeing the same second part of the duodenum from above. Is that, uh, is that okay, Anil? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. So that's the second part of the duodenum. Yeah. So now we know why you cockerized the duodenum so much. That was a good move. In. <laughs> you were all wondering why you well, cockerized the duodenum I, so much. I, I just, you know, I was anticipating difficulty at the top, uh, David. So I don't know why I did it, but. Uh, um, but it's some, some, you know, it was coming good nicely. Move, good move in the yeah. Very nice. I, I, I hadn't planned it that way, but with the plane was coming nicely and considering all this corruption at the top end, I thought we might as well do a bit more in that area and that seems to have helped. So that's, that's the building on there. So we've got a bit more to do. You are not feeling the tumor as yet? Or can you make out where the tumor I'm, is? I'm, I'm able to feel it somewhere here. Go ahead. The last two strands. I mean, I'm sure you're noticing. I'm trying to um, switch on my energy only after ensuring that the harmonic is far away from. Um, vital structures. I don't want to press the energy button before that. Absolutely, absolutely. Because That's a very important thing. Yeah, yeah. In fact, some people would probably keep that, uh, uh, keep it in the opposite way. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I agree. So, so what I do is I go in first and then I lift it up that way. Because you never know. I mean, IVC is not far, you know, far from here. I mean, if you just go dig, if you, if you, if you just take this, this, tosh, this adventitia away, you should be able to see the IVC. So, so, I mean, the basically the rules don't change. The basic structures like look, cook, and cook. Can uh, cook. Can look can and cook. It's the same. Either it's a. Absolutely. Uh, a great one. Cook. Great one, sir. <laughs> you know, these small cook, little tips are very cook. important for uh, safe conduct of these major surgeries okay. because uh, sometimes an accidental injury may go undetected and uh, can lead to disaster. So, these small little tips are are very, very important uh, in uh, these uh, big surgeries. Uh, would you be worried about the ureter at this stage? Just no, 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 I've seen it already. Not. I've seen it, yes. uh, but over here, I'm still, I'm still at the... We are still at the kidney. I'm still we at the, the, the kidney. I'm still, I'm still at the uh, pelvis of the kidney level. So, so I'm, I'm 
Okay, so that's the kidney. We are approaching the lower pole. Low, lower yes. pole. So, so, right. So, Jamil, I think the addition to that uh, anterior abdominal wall is actually helping you. Right. It's a wise thing to keep adhesions which are your friends. Yes. And not treat all adhesions as enemies. Well, the earlier, the first few uh, adhesions were not really friends. I had to take them down completely. But uh, the, the, the one that is, uh, that's taken the pylorus up to the anterior abdominal wall, I entirely agree. That's giving me this uh, retraction, natural retraction. But earlier, I mean, I, I think uh, you missed the earlier part, I mean, so this, this was, uh, uh, I mean, I was not able to see this area at all. So we had to take all of it down. At what point are you planning to take the middle pulling? Uh, uh, meaning at what point, meaning? Uh, uh, at this organ. Uh, no. Oh, no, not now, not now. Uh, my idea is to get the gastro um, colic uh, momentum freed up a bit. And, and then uh, shift my monitor to the patient's head end and me going to the patient's foot end. I've got the patient in the esophageal position and then lift the transverse colon up and go to the origin of the middle colic. That's the plan anyway. You take the middle colic from below or from above colon? Uh, sorry, below, sir, below. Below. So I think in these kind of situations, these kind of energy sources do help. Though all energy sources are more or less the same, but uh, I think having an ultrafusion or a or a pipe lamp which can dissect, hold, cut at the same time does help. What do you think, sir? Yeah, you, you can't you 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 can't imagine surgery without these gadgets. They make it your surgery faster. They make it more elegant. They decrease the blood loss. They give you planes. You know, the planes open up. If, uh, particularly with the harmonization. Yeah. The cavitation effect, effect of the harmonic. The, the harmonic, the planes open up. In contrast to ligature, you know, which actually sees the, sees the planes. So. Anybody in the audience would like to ask any question? Please do so directly. How many people do right uh, lap right hemicolic thing? Two, I think. When Dr. Haru asks right hemicolic thing, he is asking from the point right. of view of malignancy. Because a lot of general surgeons do benign uh, right no, right lap. No, I am yeah. asking both benign or malignant, but lap. So I think one, two, three. So I think most of us are uh, in the audience who are. Uh, doing the open right rather than lap and I think this should be a great, uh, so it's not a classical learning case but still. Can I just say something here? Uh, no? uh, okay. I think you will have probably I the think, middle, no? Well, uh, I, I, I think, think, right to I think uh, right for the middle. Uh, Anil, I have a feeling this has the right, uh, I mean the gastropolic trunk, the colonic branch of the gastropolic trunk of Henley which starts there, um, has given the epiploic branch that way, and the colonic branch is coming this way. Whatever it is, I'm going to clip it. Would you I, want to I, clip I, it, or just, I, I think it's wiser to clip? Sorry, say that again? So you would clip it, I as you presume. Yeah, I'm going to clip it. Yeah. I have a feeling this is a bit more lateral to call yeah. Call it as a middle point. Little more, little yeah, more to the right. The right yeah. Yeah, I, I think this right is uh, the colic branch of the gastrocolic uh, trunk of Henley. So I am going to clip it, but I I don't think this is the middle colic. Clip it, Right, 
فورس فورس اديني استنى بس كان تاني صح شوف ويلكم بس ويلكم نايس ايه ده امبو سوني سوني شكرا This is one of the most uh, fragile areas uh, yes, in the abdomen, you know. Yes, sir. And we got the head of the pancreas and ulcerate process. The vessels are very thin walled, they bleed easily, they are difficult to control. But you can see how Dr. Jamil is patiently and carefully holding the bleeder and uh, clipping it. So that yeah, was wonderful. Wonderful. that was wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, this is, you know, an energy source here can actually increase the bleeding rather, yes. uh, rather than decrease the bleeding by damaging the thin walls. So, but these are all low pressure systems. These are all branches of the portal vein. It's a very low pressure system. And we have seen a very wonderful way to achieve hemostasis in this area. Very well done, Dr. Jamie. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So as uh, Kripali sir said, uh, I, was, I was actually concentrating on this vessel and I probably uh, pulled it a touch too, 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 too far, uh, too strong rather, and that uh, ripped off that small vessel, whatever that was, it's probably a vessel that's branching out from here and going to the head of the country, a continent process. So we held it and we put a metric in. So for this, I'm going to put a Himalaya. That's fine. You have to remember that there can be variations in the vessels in this area, yes. particularly on the right side. And you have to be, you have to understand that you should be able to handle these variations, uh, particularly in a patient ridden with uh, additions because of previous surgery. So, what I'm going to do now to get to the middle colic, I have to open up this this plane a bit more. I'm still only at the proximal third of the transverse colon. I've just gone past the hepatic section. Although it may look like I've done a lot, if I haven't. I've only done maybe, you know, 20% of the transverse colon. So that's not enough for me to look for the middle colic. I'm going to open up this gastrocolic uh, momentum a bit more to, uh, to help me to identify the middle colic. So that's the next plan. Uh, we will do all of this in this position, and when we get to the middle colic, we will see if we can carry on in this position itself, or if we have to, uh, if I have to come uh, uh, to the uh, to the um, footing. So just going layer by layer, nothing else. Uh, let's see. Sometimes you are lucky and you can get into it, but uh,
So we're going to take this special learning. I think it's the middle college. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This seems to be the middle college. This is the middle college. It's a, as you can see, it's quite a quite a sturdy vessel. Uh, I've not fully skeletonized it. It's okay. I'm, I'm just just going to put a cable off there. Um, what should not be done is a lot of traction like that because if this vessel tears the the, 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 the other end, the torn end, retracts back, you know, behind the unsinate process and it's extremely difficult to retrieve it and control the bleeding. So, you've got to treat this middle colic vessel with a lot of respect. Keep up. So, that means our vascular isolation is now almost complete. We have taken the middle colic trunk, right colic does not exist. We have taken the colonic branch of the trunk of Henley. Yes, sir. And now we are taking the middle colic. Correct. So, our vascular isolation is... Uh, Almost over. Yes, sir. Agree. So again. Same as I said before, when you've got plastic material like this, it is better not to use the energy device. So I'm going to use the scissors to cut it. So that's the middle colic tank. So, so far you have seen a very wonderful demonstration of a uh, difficult uh, Extended right hemicolectomy in a patient who had previous surgery adhesions and a bulky tumor in the, not bulky, I won't say it's bulky. It is a tumor just to the left of the hepatic flexure. Yes, sir. That we've got the middle colic, we will do a bit more of this. And then okay. Hold this, Dora. Uh, you know, we when we take the ileocolic trunk, okay. we generally divide the ileum early in our surgery, uh, Dr. Jami. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I'm uh, discussing a variation. No, no. I, because I, I, by the time you come back to all the dissection, you see that your ileum is very well perfused, very well vascularized, and then yes, you know. Yeah. I mean, this is generally our practice. I mean, this no, is no, the first surgery to surgeon. Very, very good idea. But, uh, this is what we generally do, that we divide the ileum as a, as a early. Correct. So that subsequently we are taking it for the anastomosis. Correct. We know that uh, its vascularity yes. at the end is not compromised. Correct. Correct. Is that just... Let's come down, come down. Yes, sir. I, I do that too. You are absolutely right. Uh, but today I've been so worked up on... The, I mean, carried, o carried away by, by this... Uh, uh, upper abdominal uh, adhesion. Yeah, I can understand that. So, I thought we'll just finish off the difficult bit first. And so, now Dr. Jamil is clearing the momentum over the transverse colon in preparation for uh, dividing the colon. At, his this, uh, at the site, he has already decided. You think you are you're planning for an extra bathroom? Ah, that, that was the next thing I was going to uh, discuss with, with you as well. Now, there's, well, maybe for the benefit of the audience, if I can just uh, say a couple of couple of things. I mean, the two ways by which you can do anastomosis after doing this, you can resect the bowel inside, bring the whole thing up through a mid upper midline incision, and do an extra corporeal anastomosis, or you could resect, um, keep the specimen somewhere in the, you know somewhere inside the peritoneal cavity, do the intracortical anastomosis, and then retrieve the specimen through a final style incision, which is a great option for ladies who have already got uh, uh, final style scars from cesareans or hysterectomies. Both have their advantages, disadvantages. Um, the second option, which is final style, is perceived to, to cause less pain and better cosmetics. The first option is great because uh, uh, you save a lot of money. Uh, you don't have to use endoscopic staplers. 
you can just pull the whole thing out and use a standard open stapler and do a 2 to the PDS 2 trick. I think they got into some kind of a plane there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was a breather. <laughs> And uh, now that the external view is on, uh, there is one question about where you will want to put the incision for the extracorporeal. Okay, extracorporeal always in the upper midline. Because okay. the bowel. Can you just mark that out? Just. Okay. With your finger? This is the umbilical port. Yeah. 5 cm here. If you, have okay. done an, if you have done an adequate ileocecal mobilization, this ileum should come here. Absolutely. So the, the hepatic flexure is completely mobilized and the pedicle is there. So we have done the entire cecum ascending colon ileocolic pedicle at its origin, done the hepatic flexure. We have also done the middle colic over here, right at its origin, at the you know, near the pancreatic uncinate. And uh, because this is a uh, transverse colon tumor, and, uh, um, uh, you know, because it's a mixed proximal transverse colon tumor, we have taken the middle colic at the origin, and I have dissected all the way up to the um, distal one-third of the transverse colon, purely because I, I wanted to do the stapling somewhere at this level, where, where you see my port right now. So that's exactly where I'll be Absolutely. doing my stapling. So that will be my... That will be my distal resection margin, which is 10 centimeters from the hepatic flexure, I mean from the tumor, and the proximal resection margin will be the terminal ileum. And all of this is adjacent from previous surgery, which we have taken now. So I think that's the end of the laparoscopic uh, part. What I'm going to do now is, as I showed you earlier, uh, make a 5 centimeter incision. All of it is completely mobilized, so it should it should reach out. It should come to the ceiling quite nicely. And then I'm going to use a, uh, I mean, all the pedicles have been taken, so I need the uh, I'm going to use two linear cutters, open linear cutters, and then uh, the third one for the side-to-side -side anastomosis, and I close it with a 2 OPDS and put it back in. Uh, I don't close the mesenteric defect because these are these are large mesenteric defects. Nothing usually happens, so uh, so I just put it back in and uh, and then uh, uh, put a drain through one of these uh, these these, these ports. That's it, uh, Anil, from me. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Jamil. That was an excellent demonstration, patience, and uh, excellence. I think really, really wonderful. I, I think you deserve a great uh, applause, and I'm sure you'll hear it from you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you for, thank you all of you in the, in the hall. Um, um, uh, you know, thanks for all your kind words and support. It's, it's, a, it's an honor and pleasure to be doing this in front of all of you. I, I thank IAGES, the president, and the entire. Uh, uh, EC for giving us this opportunity. Uh, uh, I thank the entire team members here in Apollo Hospital and the patient who has voluntarily agreed to uh, to help us to demonstrate this case. Thank you very much, all of you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.